So we are back from a weekend at the track in Sicily. And boy, oh boy, I have so much stuff to tell about the Hypermotard. So on Thursday night, when I arrived in Sicily, the bike started misfiring, but very lightly. But eventually on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it got progressively much worse. So much so that on Saturday afternoon, and Sunday, the bike lost a lot of power and it was barely drivable anymore. And so I started inspecting the bike because I also got a check engine light on Saturday, which I couldn't check what it was because I didn't have my cables and laptop with me. So I didn't know exactly what was happening with the bike. But what I noticed on Sunday is that the exhaust sound got much, much louder. So that's the first thing I started inspecting. And behold, we've got a cracked exhaust manifold. So I'm gonna show you guys as best as I could because it's a bit dark here. So this is the vertical cylinder and this is the exhaust manifold here. So let me show you, yes, that one. And there is also the O2 sensor and there is also the heat shield. So the heat shield has the brackets connected directly to the manifold and we can see clearly here that there are some cracks in the manifold and I'm guessing this happened because of vibrations obviously and the welding fell apart. Now unfortunately it's not just this bracket that failed but also the second one here. So if I move the heat shield with my hand, let me focus. So we can see that the bracket also failed on this side and the bracket is moving freely and obviously the exhaust was leaking from all of these welding holes now as soon as i saw this i assumed that the oxygen sensor was also giving a false reading and it was getting very i guess lean because air pressure was getting into the exhaust then the auto sensor was thinking that the mixture was very lean so it was compensating with more and more fuel so the mixture itself got rich so with a mixture of leaking exhaust and the auto sensor malfunctioning we obviously got a lot of misfiring on the bike at least since it happened early in the weekend it kind of ruined a bit you know the hype that i had for the hyper motor because it was the first time I was going to the track with it. Usually I go with the Ducati Scrambler at the back over there. Now, what other problems did we have at the track? So, we've also scraped a lot of our pegs, both sides. So, as you can see here, it is shaved off completely. Also, our gear shifter gave out because it was also dragging during leaning. It's made out of aluminum, so it's pretty soft so what we did is drill the hole on the lever and put an allen bolt this long put it on tape and we were good to go and continue racing the other end we've got the same problem we have dragged the foot peg way too much and we've also dragged the brake lever itself you can see it is also shaved off but yeah other than that i think those are all the problems that i had Obviously, the misfiring issue was pretty severe, which affected my performance. But all is not bad, and I'm gonna say some positives about this bike. So even though it has the stock suspension, this is not the SP version, so we don't have adjustable forks. The bike handled pretty well, and I was really surprised by how easy it is to maneuver it and lean it over. Lean angle, obviously, it's quite crazy because we've scraped off our pegs. And also, the braking is really, really good on this bike. Even though, again, we don't have any fancy master cylinder, this is the stock one, we still had enough braking power. We've got the rear tire, which is completely shot on the right hand side. So, we've got to replace this tire. But the front one actually still has. You know a couple of life left but we are obviously gonna replace it also with the rear one just a reminder this is a power cup 2 michelin and the rear is a michelin power rs 
I'd say it was quite a good combination on this bike. Don't forget, this is a 110 horsepower, so it is quite adequate. And the combination of these tires and the bike was quite good. Now, I know, guys, you probably want to see some footage from the track, but unfortunately, this track that we went to, it doesn't allow any GoPros or cameras while racing. So that is a bit of a bummer because we don't have any videos. But next time for sure we'll go to a different track where they will allow recording so we can get some nice juicy footage of this hyper motor. So what is the plan to fix these issues? We have already ordered some foot pegs and also I've ordered the gear lever. So they're gonna be a bit different. I've ordered uh, an adjustable gear lever and also some adjustable foot pegs. I didn't order rear sets because I think that would be a bit overkill. What I need is just a little bit of more clearance on the foot pegs. The thing we need to do is undo this part of the exhaust and take it for repairs and welding. So what we need to do is remove this heat shield and the three bolts that connect the manifold to the engine. Now, thankfully, the exhaust is in parts and this splits just right here. So we don't need to remove the whole exhaust, I'm hoping. And over here, there should also be some springs that we need to remove also to remove the manifold. Now, obviously, working with exhaust, what I'm scared of is that all of these bolts are going to be seized and rusted. So... Hopefully, they're not gonna give us any issues and probably the worst ones are gonna be the bolts attached to the engine itself because these usually rust the most. As usual guys, just before I start removing the exhaust, I connected my cable to my laptop to check any error codes and we've got a P0135. So what I'm thinking now, it's still the vertical cylinder issue the auto sensor but maybe it's some kind of excessive reading because of the exhaust leak and once i get the exhaust welded and fixed i will start the bike and check if the error is still there if not then we have to tackle this issue afterwards so let us start removing the heat shield from the back i'm gonna start with the right hand side of the bolts Oh, I was actually quite lucky this time around and it got loose immediately as soon as I turned the spanner. Now just a note, before I remove it completely, you will need to undo the cable which sits on the right hand side. So it's just this four pin plug. I undid it already. So just so you know. And now that we have the heat shield off, we can clearly see all the damage. Look at all these holes. We've got one, two, three, and four holes. So no wonder the bike was misfiring that badly. Um, I guess I'm gonna order also an auto sensor while I'm here. Uh, this is probably the original one. So, you know, I've already changed the front one, which only costed me 14 euro or something around that. So might as well just replace the rear one while we're here. So the next step is to start undoing the header bolts, which are located on the engine side. And probably these are gonna be a more of a pain to remove because they're probably all rusted. So we've managed to break off the inner bolt which is very lucky if you tell me, because it is, was super, super rusted, but finally it is turning free. Unfortunately, it's very dark in there, so I can't really show you guys. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the top bolt over there, there is absolutely no space to put a socket here. It's so tight. And I was checking the workshop manual and it states that you need this Ducati tool, obviously a specialized tool to remove something. And obviously I'm not gonna buy this tool, it's insanely overpriced, it's over $100, so I need to come up with something. Most probably it's gonna be a pain again, but I have to remove the tank again, so I have more clearance. This is the tool I had made, so it's basically a 10 millimeter socket welded to a small piece of metal. It kind of resembles like a wrench. I bend it a bit the metal, so this will be able to fit in the very tight space to remove the top nut, so it can fit in this little space here. Obviously it took me a lot of time because I have to remove the socket, put it up, turn and going like this all the time. So just so you know guys, this took me probably around 4 hours to remove this. So we have gotten the vertical exhaust manifold off and we can see all the damage now. So there are 4 holes which all match the heat shield brackets. So they have totally snapped off. I'm guessing this happened obviously with rust and corrosion and obviously being a Ducati there's a lot of vibration. So with time and pushing it hard on the track they finally gave out. Now for this to happen I think that the welds weren't strong in the first place because honestly I've never had failures like these on any of my bikes. Now, I thought about replacing this all together instead of welding it, but I couldn't find any parts, uh, used parts obviously. New ones are very expensive, um, upwards of probably 150 euro. So, we're just gonna try and repair this. I also found some other users on forums and even on eBay that had similar issues to these. Here, yeah, overall, vertical. Manifold was giving a lot of issues it seems. So what I'm gonna do now is grab my manifold and head to the welding shop where we will fix this and also I will tell the guy to also check if there are any weaknesses that we can spot and we can fix before they fail. So that will be all for this video. We just did a little damage report and a little bit of review of the hyper motor at the track. So now what I will do is take the exhaust manifold to the welding shop, get that fixed. And while that is happening, I will also wait for the new parts to arrive. So I've ordered some better foot pegs and also the gear lever. And once they arrive and I've got the exhaust, we will assemble everything together in one episode. So until then, see you guys in the next one.